Hello whiskey fans, what if I showed you two different bottles of whiskey in the same shop, same bottle, same box, same size box, same colour scheme, same packaging, same name in big letters across the top of the box and across the middle of the label, same logo, must be two different whiskies from the same distillery, right? Some of you will know where I'm going with this one. But for those of you who don't, and for those of you who do, play along for a second. Now, where do you think these whiskies are from? Note the answer to that question is so subtle that you may not even be able to tell from the, the quality of my camera. It may be too fine print, too blurry, too small, too subtle to tell. And everyone that I've showed these two bottles, these two boxes, packagings for these two whiskies, everyone that I've shown has said these whiskies must be distilled at the Singleton Distillery. And even when I told them that there's no such place as the Singleton Distillery and asked them to have a closer look, most of them still couldn't tell me where these whiskies were distilled. Welcome, whiskey fans, to the wonderfully, awfully, wonderfully confusing world of Singleton Whiskey. Let me read a little extract to you from the Scotch Whiskey Regulations 2009, which is actually law, it's legislation here in the United Kingdom. So, Scotch Whiskey Regulations 2009, Regulation 9, Paragraph 4. Scotch whiskey must not be labelled, packaged, advertised or promoted in any other way that, having regard to the presentation of the product as a whole, creates a likelihood that the public may think that it has been distilled at any distillery or place other than the distillery or place at which it was actually distilled. <sighs> I think they need a few more commas in there. But whiskey fans, how can that possibly be? When everyone that I've asked about these bottlings, these whiskies, has been so confused, thoroughly befuddled, and they've all thought that this one is from the Singleton Distillery, and this one is also from the Singleton Distillery, it seems that surely something is wrong, isn't it? Because let me remind you that every time the compass box that perennial thorn in the side of the Scotch Whiskey Authority does anything remotely unusual, the SWA jumps on them immediately. But then when Diageo come along, who is the company that owns the Singleton brand and both of these distilleries, and they seem to set out on a path to be as confusing and misleading about where these whiskies come from as possible, it doesn't seem to matter especially when you consider that Diageo is one of the two largest members of the SWA. Oh, that might be it. <laughs> what do you think, whiskey fans? Am I being cynical to say that one of the, probably the biggest financial backers of the SWA, engage in behaviour which has confused Almost everyone, even people that really know their whiskey, sometimes get in a muddle about what these whiskies are and where they're from. And the SWA turns a blind eye. Seems a little bit like a case of one rule for one and no rules for another. Not that it really matters too much. It does just seem odd that they seem to be trying to be deliberately confusing. But these whiskies here, you've seen this one already because it's just the, the wonderful artfully created presentation at Diageo have done for us this year. It's the 19-year-old Singleton of Glendullen. So this is a Speyside whiskey, 19 years old. It's presented at what I believe is yeah, its natural cask strength. You would like to think that it's colouring free and non-chill filtered, but not actually sure. Bottled at a strength of 54.6. So this whiskey is from the Singleton of Glendullen, or probably more commonly, the distillery is just known as Glendullen. Whereas this whiskey here, which I actually bought to do a little comparison between these two whiskies, because I bought this one and then when it was on the way, I saw this one on offer in the supermarkets and I thought that's a fairly affordable whiskey that I haven't had before and it'll be fun to do a little comparison. This one is from the Dufftown Distillery. So branded as the Singleton of Dufftown, or well, these days 
everything just tends to be branded as the singleton with the same box color scheme logo and everything it's madness but this one's from Dufftown this one's from Glendullen a little bit of a brief explanation as to what is going on with the Singleton brand. I don't think anyone can explain it fully because it seems to just be a little bit of a mess. But basically Diageo have got three distilleries and they're all fairly large output distilleries and they've all been branded as Singleton. There was a long time ago a fourth Singleton, get to that in a minute, but the three Singletons that we've got now is the Singleton of Dufftown, which predominantly produces they all produce blend fodder, but Dufftown produces single malts available in the UK and European markets. You've got the Singleton of Glendullen, which is actually quite hard to find here in the UK, and probably Europe as well, I imagine, unless you're looking at independent bottlings. This one is almost exclusively only available as OB bottlings in the United States. And then the third Singleton, which is probably the one that's absolute hardest to find here in the UK, is the Singleton of Glenord. And the reason for that is that one seems to be almost exclusively offered as a single malt in the Asian market. The fourth Singleton, which you won't get as a, a current bottling under the Singleton name anymore, was the Singleton of Othrusk, which has now been sort of demoted back to a flora and fauna release. But if you find some very old bottlings of Othrusk, you can actually find some that are marketed and branded as Singleton of Othrusk, and that was the original Singleton distillery, which, when you think about it, just makes this whole mess of having three distilleries with the same name even worse, considering that there was a previous distillery operating under that name. Anyway, the whiskey that I'm going to be looking at today, because doing the one that I really like first <laughs> and probably the one that everyone's excited to see is this Singleton of Glendullen. I'll just show you the box once more. How confusing is it that you've got Singleton up there in huge letters, you've got the same logo as all the other bottlings. The only bit that actually says Glendullen is right down here underneath the tasting notes. Bizarre. But anyway, this is a lovely whiskey. It's part of this year's 2021's special releases from Diageo. And you've probably, hopefully, all seen my video on all the lovely, artfully created branding that's gone onto these bottles and boxes. This whiskey, 19 years old, matured predominantly in American oak and finished in cognac seasoned casks. So there's cognac seasoned casks, possibly also American oak, but there's been some sort of finishing period in there after the main maturation of this whiskey. Whiskey is presented at a natural cask strength of 54.6. This is a 700 milliliter bottle and it's the kind of standard for Singleton these days bottle, which is like a, a kind of faux hip flask shape, kind of D shaped, very tall, very wide, makes it look very big and imposing, kind of fancy. I don't mind it. I do worry with a lot of these flat bottles that they're not quite as strong as a round bottle perhaps. Probably nothing to worry about though. I'm yet to break one of these. So anyway, this is presented at a very high strength, 54.6. And I've tasted this one before. You can see that I've been enjoying this one rather a lot. But what I do think is that at the full natural cask strength, this one is, it pains me to say this a little bit, but this one is a little bit a little bit fierce and there's a bit of grassiness that really tends to dominate a bit when you drink this at the full strength. I do think that with this one I tend to water it down sort of between 45 and 50 percent and I think if you've got this whiskey you'll probably have a much more enjoyable experience if you do something similar. So probably similar ratios to what I said on the, the Lagavulin 12 year old at cask strength. If you put about 25 millilitres of whiskey in the glass, top it off with 5 millilitres of the most neutral water that you've got to hand, that'll knock it down just below 50 and it'll give you a very nice dram indeed. So in true Blue Peter fashion, here is one that I prepared earlier in my Lagavulin branded glass, which has been washed since I had the Lagavulin, because if it hadn't, you would only taste Lagavulin in this. So let's get the lid off the top 
be careful because it's still quite a strong whiskey and let's see how it noses so first thing about this whiskey even though it's a space cider it's a relatively challenging space cider there are definitely a lot of whiskies out there that are a lot more easy drinking than this singleton of glendolen and i don't mind that I quite like a whiskey that's got a little bit of pepper and spice to it. Not literally, I mean just a little bit of extra character, a little bit more something to find, a little bit more interesting than your average everyday easy drinker. What I do get a lot of on the nose in this one is a strong grassiness. And I think that's actually, it's kind of cliche. A lot of people that try Glendullen and a lot of the, the Singleton Dufftown releases, a lot of people pick out grassy and malty notes, but I think this one is true to style. It's a lovely, intense, characterful whiskey, but there is that strong grassy note. And it's not grassy like a freshly cut lawn. It's more like when you cut your lawn or you cut hay or whatever and you leave it to dry in the sun until it's bleached and almost papery and crisp, that type of dry grassiness. Also getting a fair amount of caramel, nice gristiness and some really nice sweet and juicy lemon lime notes. It's definitely a spirit forward whiskey, especially considering that this has been in the cask for 19 years. It really is all about the spirit. I do always think that cognac casks, they tend to have more of an ability to fly below the radar. They have less of a tendency to dominate whiskey. They tend to be more subtle, and I kind of put them in the same camp as rum casks. Rum casks are not always as subtle, but I think that rum and cognac, they tend to marry together with the flavours that you get from a standard bourbon maturation, more so than sherry, definitely more so than port or Pedro Jimenez. Absolutely more than red wine. But as for the cognac casks on this one, it's probably hard to say. It's hard to tell what influence that you've got in there that's coming through from the cognac cask and what is just a combination of the malty spirit and that bourbon cask. What I am getting is lots of sweet apple notes, like sweetened apple juice, grape juice, that kind of really sweet, playful fruitiness. It's definitely a very sweet whiskey, very sweet on the nose, very bright, very fresh and juicy. Let's see how it tastes. lovely stuff. Again, reasonably easy drinking, lots of sweet maltiness, and the maltiness, it reminds me of, I don't know how many people are going to know what I mean here, but those malted, malted milk biscuits or malted wheat, whatever they're called, those biscuits that have like a, a cow imprinted on them. For anyone that hasn't these, I sound absolutely mental now, but malted milk biscuits dipped in milk chocolate, it's more of that dry grassiness that I got on the nose. A little bit of peanut, slight nuttiness, and I'll describe that as a peanut sort of note. And that's odd, because that's something that I'm more used to seeing in bourbons rather than whiskey. So whether that's coming through from the bourbon casks, or if it's just a combination of the, the maltiness, those toasted grain notes with a little bit of spice from the casks, hard to say, but really nice. And again on the palate, lots of those lovely lemon-lime notes. So lovely full flavoured whiskey, lovely fresh, juicy, very intense. It's challenging, but
but it's still got enough of sweetness and enough freshness that it doesn't become tiring or too austere. As for the finish, I'm going to say medium to medium short, at least when you knock it down to sort of between 45 and 50% as I have done. And I think the finish is really the one place where you get a sense of like old maltiness. I think that nosing this whiskey, it's very fresh. It definitely smells incredibly well made, but it doesn't have all of the hallmarks that you usually get on a very old whiskey. And again, on the palate, you're not getting a huge obvious sense. You're not getting signs that this is a 19 year old whiskey, but on that late palate on the finish, you start to get some of that nutty oiliness that really gives it away. As for a grade, proud to say that I'm going to give this one an A minus. And I think that's a well-deserved grade. Really good job done by Diageo with this Singleton of Glendolen this year. And interestingly, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because I am going to review the Singleton of Dufftown No Aid Statement release after this whiskey. But I think you can see a common theme amongst the Singleton whiskies as well. And I don't think that that's because they are related in any way, although obviously they're owned by the same company. I think it's more to do with the fact that they're all really blend fodder distilleries. They're all enormous distilleries that have a really high output. And a lot of that whiskey is tailor made to go into blends, blended malts or blended scotch. And I think there's a common theme between all of the Singleton whiskies, as well as a lot of the Flora and Fauna range, because a lot of those are at least partly blend fodder distilleries as well. That's the reason why they are unsung heroes that we don't get, because the majority of it, and at times all of it, was being put into blends. And because of that, I think that you do tend to get that sort of slightly grassy, malty, light, easy drinking profile. I think more than anything else, it probably it's a lesson in what these companies are trying to achieve when they mass produce whiskey to go into blends. Luckily for us, when you do get these whiskies available as single malt, sometimes, and especially when you get the, the special editions where they are hand-picked curated casks, you can also get incredibly good single malts out of these distilleries. So me personally, I think that this Singleton of Glendolen 19 year old it's a great whiskey it's great to experience an old whiskey from a, at least here in the uk and europe this is a very unheard of distillery i'm told that it's a lot more common in the united states but it's also really good that this whiskey it seems to all be about the spirit it's all about the distiller and not so much the cask i think that the signs of the the cognac finish are there in this whiskey and I suspect that it may be a much inferior whiskey if it hadn't had that cognac maturation. But I think those cognac notes, they they do tend to sit kind of beside the spirit. <laughs> and that's a, a new terminology that I've just made up. But you hear a lot of people talk about cask finishes, especially the extra sweet sherry finishes. And people often say that they sit on top of a whiskey, covering up other things and not integrating properly. And on the other hand, some casks, they can completely transform a whiskey. I think that this cognac finish doesn't do either of those. It really sits beside it. And it's more like an extra additional thing. But I think it definitely adds something. As to how necessary it was, hard to say really. Last thing I want to talk about with this whiskey is the price because as far as I know there's still some of this available. Some of the special releases from Diageo this year have gone out of stock. They went out of stock quite quickly. Whether they are permanently out of stock or if they're going to come back into stock when they come up with a new batch probably depends on which release you're looking at. But I'd say if you do want any of this and you can afford it, buy it now because it is going to go out of stock reasonably quickly and you don't want to be forced to pay secondary market prices for this in a few months time but I paid about I think it's 135 pounds for this whiskey here in the UK is it overpriced probably is a little bit more than I'd like to pay even though it's a 19 year old cask strength whiskey probably I probably prefer to be paying around 9500 pounds for something like this I think but it is a special release and it is 
very, very good whiskey. So thanks everyone for watching and I hope you'll join me for the next review when I'll be looking at another completely different, similar, but entirely separate Singleton. Is that clear enough for you? Thanks for watching. Cheers.